Hello everybody, uh, I've been looking at the river systems around the world and I wanted to uh, actually make it super fun and interesting and even involve uh, the entertainment industry. So I'm working on a potential film here in Idaho called The Last Prayer. Man, I just got back from church. Uh, it was awesome and interesting and uh really uh, i wanted to look at this concept of the last prayer and look at potential filming locations in idaho um if you're not familiar with idaho i'm sorry i'm talking so loud uh idaho actually has uh well it's supposedly the best location to do rafting on the planet uh so let me repeat that uh Idaho has some awesome rivers. Uh, there was a major film uh, produced in Idaho, Hollywood film, um, actually about uh, the rivers. I think it's called The Rivers Run Through It. Uh, and it was uh, a fairly important movie because it started to do kind of uh, films about the outdoors and films essentially about wildlife uh, and the rivers specifically so uh, I would like to try to take a look at that so if you're familiar with Idaho uh, it's a little bit hard to understand this whole entire map and I'll try to get this explanation here clear hold on a second so i wanted to start with a different map perspective for idaho so you can see essentially what's going on uh basically around the world as well as in idaho specifically so there is quite a lot of of uh, volcanic activity uh, on the west coast as you can see here and particularly up in alaska uh, a lot of people say that the super volcano uh, may actually be in Idaho area. Uh, so actually, uh, when you look at all these earthquakes, you can basically see there's a huge amount of pressure up here near Mount Denali. That's the tallest mountain in North America. There's another really tall mountain uh, down in Los Angeles, Mount Whitney. Um, but if you look at this map, essentially, you can see there's something weird going on where there's almost this, this angel... Uh, coming out of Yellowstone. It kind of comes from Southern California and heads up into the center of Idaho here. Uh, and basically, uh, a lot of these river systems, there's a whole mountain range here. Let me see if I can, I'm sorry, this map is kind of going slowly here. Hold on a second. So I wanted to ask you, like, if you're wanting to produce a major film in Idaho, like, how would you go about doing that? Um, so Los Angeles typically has produced a lot of films. Uh, and that's basically down here. And as you can see, there's a whole pathway essentially heading up to Idaho uh, spiritually and logically in terms of the earthquakes um, and kind of the head being right in the center here. And then there's kind of some wings here heading up into even Canada. So this whole mountain range, if you're not familiar with it, let me see if I can change this map a little bit here. So it's, um, sorry about this, I'm not, always i think it's faults no hazards so if you look at this map you can kind of see this mountain range this is a huge mountain range it's actually bit much bigger than the rocky mountains you can see this all starts in idaho here and yellowstone is essentially right here and that's what a lot of people call the super volcano but you can see the mountain range is you know 10 20 times 30 times the size of the rocky mountains uh, and you look at internationally, uh, this mountain range is actually probably bigger uh, than the uh, uh, the mountain range over here in China and India. Uh, so basically, it's it is the biggest uh, mountain range on the planet. Uh, it actually starts in the Andes down here, and you can see there's quite a lot of mountains uh, heading up into here. So this is quite quite significant uh mountain range and let's just go around the planet so you can compare that and you can see basically this is banff up here a really beautiful mountain range and you can see even the appalachian mountain range is quite small compared to what we have here 
essentially starting in Idaho and you can see there's quite a number of hills here in Turkey and there's actually a lot of earthquakes but not nearly uh, what we see here um, also in Alaska a huge amount so uh, that uh, you can kind of see here in Afghanistan uh, as well as and basically all the water basically falls from these mountains this is some of the biggest rivers in the world uh, but uh, since given the size of this mountain range, uh, we're talking about something many times larger. This is actually a huge plateau, so there's actually, can't quite see it, but this is actually quite a large mountain range as well because it kind of includes Tibet and heads up into here and then kind of gets back into the sea level there. So it is a little bit hard to see the details exactly, but uh, essentially this is probably the just as large or about the same size as the mountain range that we're looking at but you can see not nearly as many earthquakes you get quite large earthquakes here in japan you can see we each got a recent one 7.5 i don't know if you're watching that uh, i saw some videos and it was very frightening uh just looking at how significantly the mount the the building like your entire building like you, you live in a house well it's gonna like really shake uh during a 7.5 uh, it's it's unbelievable. I mean, the the telephone poles like literally just sway, uh, you know, uh, like a full meter in some cases or more. So it's a huge amount of energy. But you can see that 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 is a huge amount of energy. But the kind of energy that we're talking about up here in Alaska, uh, and also here where that super volcano may start, which is Yellowstone, and this is um, quite quite important uh, project so you can see there's quite a lot of fresh water here but the interesting thing is is that uh, you know these mountain ranges essentially what happens is that the Pacific Ocean uh, let me see if I can get a wind map here but you can see a typical wind storm kind of coming up through here this pulls up a lot of water from the ocean and kind of dumps it uh, right along the Alaska coast and you actually get some of the most rain in the entire planet actually comes here believe it or not even more than in in uh, the jungle and I, I think the most rain is maybe down in here in Colombia but uh, but actually it may not be I don't know there's there's actually quite a lot of rain here along the coast of Alaska this is a very common storm kind of all circulating here and this is what I call the spiritual North Pole so uh, we have a South Pole we have a magnetic north pole a magnetic south pole and then an actual pole that the earth spins on uh which is actually at this top of the map here so uh let me even get this windy map you can see this on 3d so we can kind of look at this together uh sorry this is gonna take a moment to load my computer this is a lot of information so you can see there's some uh important uh, things happening here and you can see this is kind of spiraling here and then the North Pole being up here but the spiritual North Pole is actually different than the actual pole that the that the earth is spinning on uh, and then even the magnetic pole so there's actually three poles right you could have a physical pole you could have a physical a one point physical pole and then you have like kind of a magnetic pole that's off centered uh, from that which is basically up let me see if I can get this map right for you so basically this triangle right here actually points to the magnetic pole if you're not familiar with that there's a mysterious triangle here and there's a magnetic pole there which is actually moving quite a bit it's actually heading out off this direction towards this fault line but the pole that we spin on is different and then there's this mysterious pole here so you can see there's definitely a lot of evidence we got this huge hurricanes that always come up through here the pacific ocean so Again, let's get back to Idaho for a second because we're trying to work on this really major project for Idaho and it want, I don't want this to be like an unbelievable film. So uh, basically there's a lot of things I'm not going to talk about on the video here. I'm going to try to make this quick so that people aren't just sitting around watching this and we're actually trying to do something fun. Um, but the key here is Yellowstone. There's actually a new project called Yellowstone that's been coming out recently um, and it's actually one of the biggest hits of all time uh in terms of uh productions and things and that's actually really on idaho's land and when you think about it yellowstone is actually here but idaho is right in here this is actually the mountain range and you can see it's quite larger than colorado um and it basically heads up to even higher mountains here in canada and whatnot but there's a lot of really pretty lakes uh that we just don't really talk about and river systems so 
wow, I kind of really took a detour. So the so the main conversation here is how to get some great filming, uh, particularly for this project. Uh, you can see there's quite a lot of farmland here. This is actually in Washington and Oregon. So Idaho, because of the mountains, there's it's actually very difficult to farm. So the farming in Idaho is really on this edge here. That's that's the edge of Idaho, which is basically heads into Oregon and Washington. But these rivers all start here in Idaho, and they actually call it the Clearwater River. And I wanted to mention this is that perhaps one of the most beautiful highways that a lot of people know about is Highway 1, which goes along the coast here. And I've driven Highway 1 many times uh, all the way down to Los Angeles. And I would say that the Idaho, uh, the Clearwater River and some of the roads in Idaho are comparable or if not better because there's just so much traffic on Highway 1. Uh, and there's just some mystery about the rivers here in Idaho. So uh, I, I wanted to really emphasize that. So I happen to live in this town called Moscow. It's a pretty hilarious name because, uh, but we actually have two major universities here, WSU and University of Idaho. They're called the Vandals here and they're the Cougars here. And then we have this major mountain here next to us uh, called Moscow Mountain. And uh, in terms of filming, uh, the Last Prayer actually has quite a lot of scenes uh, that we can do right here close to town. There's a mysterious church. This 95 actually heads all the way to San Francisco. I've driven this all the way to San Francisco. So mysteriously, you head out through Nevada. There's some really beautiful, unbelievably beautiful mountains and uh, hills if you, if you drive this straight to Nevada. So this road actually heads into lewiston there's some really this is the deepest inland port there's some unbelievable the original author of the the movie uh wanted to work on a particular scene i don't want to talk about it right now because it's such an important scene uh, but there's a chief timothy island here uh this is a very a very very cool island and unbelievable so this river is the deepest port and it's quite large from an airplane you this it's hard to appreciate how big this canyon is uh they say that this is bigger than the grand canyon so it is a spectacular view from up on the hill there's also what's called the spiral highway uh, it just does not explain how cool this is but there's a very mysterious highway all along these roads here so uh, as well as uh, there's a there's a port of Clarkston here and there's all this uh, free camping essentially along this river and paid camping here on Chief Timothy Island um, but there are quite a lot of spots there this is called the Clearwater River here and this is the river that I would say is really unbelievable to drive so if you drive up here there's a there's actually a native indigenous uh, uh, casino but there's also on this side of the river is um, kind of a, a interesting museum um, and there's Hell's Gate Canyon uh, which is basically next to this uh, airport which is a this is a, a airport you can fly uh, to many places around the country um, but there's also mysteriously another airport called Pullman Airport that you can also fly directly to Seattle and Boise out here so this is actually a major airport. Uh, they have big airplanes flying in here. Um, so it's very, and when you think about it, when you have uh, 30,000 students at each of these, there's maybe 20,000 in Idaho, but there's two major universities here. And there's also uh, another school here called uh, Lewis and Clark College. Um, but this is not really even the whole story. This is not really not, um, this is a lot of what, you know the the original film was to be Lewis and Clark. Um, this the, they're they're the one of the original explorers for the entire West Coast. They came through here, and this is their city. So, um, and then Chief Timothy we have down here. So, um, but it really doesn't explain the story at all because we have quite a lot of scenes that we need to do and come up with scripts for. So, you had all the way up to Spokane here, but you have. These unbelievably beautiful uh, lakes, one called Coeur d'Alene and the other Sandpoint. Um, and there's just a bunch of other really high mountain lakes. So 
from these lakes is some rivers that basically head out into the Columbia River um, and then also the Clearwater River. And the Clearwater River is significantly cleaner after this point. Um, the water's still pretty clean, but uh, there's basically less population out into here because it heads out into the mountains and you get uh, actually another dam here. Now this is Orofino. You can see there's a major, uh, this is actually a, a wildlife refuge. Um, and you can see there's definitely been some damage uh, due to forestry. You can see all these square spots. Um, they've actually been quite heavily f uh, deforesting to Idaho forest. And you can definitely see that on the map here. But there's just so many great scenes that can be done both in the winter. I spent some time uh, down here in Orofino and there's some unbelievable fog that comes in. Uh, and just gives you just an unbelievably cool uh, scenes out in Orofino um, and as well as here there's this is actually one of the tallest dams in the world here it's hard to appreciate uh, at Dvorak there's actually free camping here um, and there's actually a boat launch over here you can see um, but really, uh, we want to be careful to uh, appreciate every scene that we work on. Um, we don't want to do it unless we really are a hundred, a thousand percent, really, really wanting to do the scene. So, one of the scenes in the film is uh, is basically why God comes back to earth, right? And the ringing of the bell. There's a mysterious church on 95, and there's also one called Cruz. There's a hill here. As you head out of 95, you'll see it. It's really mysterious hill. Um, there's also another mysterious camping spot uh, that is not shown here. Um, but as you head out to Palouse, there's a very cool town that I definitely want to do some scenes in. It's unbelievably cool town um, for scenes and actually long-term living. So I would say many actors and people would be very interested in working in the Palouse. It's got a very cool river and this all heads down to the Columbia River um, miraculously, right? And there's an unbelievable amount of farming land here. Um, that is right on the edge of the hills and this is some of the most unique farming land uh, In the world really because they've tried to farm on hills here. It's it's hard to appreciate My brother had his wedding pictures done on a hill over here and in the Summertime it just turns bright green and it's on this is an unbelievable drive You can just imagine fields for as far as you can see of farmland um, and man people really need food and water and stuff so we really want to focus on trying to have a really huge importance of the farmland in this film project and really why lewis and clark went out west right that's going to be a huge part of it uh, but this moscow mountain here uh is super awesome but uh really there's mysterious uh things here happening all the way to potlatch and there's a buggy company if you head out to potlatch and i just got lost one time on some of these roads and i definitely recommend if you're working on this film project to get lost on some roads don't use a gps and meet people i just met a guy who runs a horse and buggy shop and he and they it's like old-fashioned carriages it was hilarious so this 95 heads all the way up here there's other indigenous natives uh that have Coeur d'Alene Reservation, as you can see here. Um, and basically you head into Coeur d'Alene here. And the south part, there's a definitely a scene that I want to do. It's called Upside Downtown. Uh, if you're reading, if you've read the script, and that's basically right in here. There's an there's like a an old guy that runs a shop there. It's a mysterious building that's almost been converted as well as a couple food stores, but it's basically got a boat launch there. I think it's Harrison, here it is, sorry about this. So uh, you can see there's like a swamp passageway here. And the cool thing along this whole river here is there's little houses and people that live along the St. Joe River, and they basically go like on these hovercrafts in the summertime and cruise all along this river. Uh, it's like a swamp, but it's very important for the wildlife too because one of the problems in the film is we really want to focus on how to get the wildlife, the deer um, and the elk and all the animals really back to the river here somehow. And you can see St. Marines is going to be a vital part of that whole discussion, working with people here to 
revitalize the wildlife make sure that this water is very clean it's fun to cruise down the river but what about the oil that spit into the water from the engine and really all the way in through here uh there's cougars it's very dangerous i wear cougar sandals i have let me show you my cougar sandals if i can find them but i uh i have some sandals kind of like these these are my brazilian flip-flops that i found at the store but uh but basically it's dangerous there's bears out here there's cougars i mean you got to be super careful you got to be really and i always think about i listen to the wildlife when i get out into these areas man there was a huge cougar we were going to go to a so one of the stories out here my brother's a geologist and there's actually hot water that comes out of the mountains like you can be in the middle of the winter time and there's hot springs i think there's the most hot springs in north america uh, are actually in this Idaho region. Uh, they're shooting out of the wall, out of the ground, and you can just like it's really miraculous. It cheered me up about Earth so much because the water is really warm, and you may want to look up all the hot springs. Uh, but again, you can see a lot of these. Uh, so the water is actually just coming out of the ground uh, and and uh, really warm, and you can actually just hang out in it. So. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's a super awesome thing. And there's some free places uh, in California. They are mostly all paid, but there are quite a number of free places in Idaho. So, but Coeur d'Alene is probably going to be a huge part of this project. Um, you can see the, the vastness of this. Uh, it's five miles. It's huge. It, it, there's just so many stories along Coeur d'Alene uh, because actually there's another airport up here in Spokane. But again, uh, with all the airports that we got down here in Moscow, believe it or not, uh, there's quite a number of students and people just really interested in working on such a project. So we got basically three major universities. There's also North Idaho College right here in Coeur d'Alene, as well as the University of Idaho has an extension. And then there's another school uh, in Spokane uh, as well. And then Sandpoint is way up here. So it really changes actually quite a bit. Uh, the scene, Sandpoint is a very different kind of town. Uh, and there's actually another lake my friend took me out to, uh, Flathead Lake, that definitely needs to be thought about. Um, and uh, Missoula here has a uh, University of Montana, so there's a whole uh, another. And this river is unbelievable. It's hilarious in the summertime. Um, this river actually heads out. And so the best rafting in the world, a lot of people say, is right in here. So if you're really sporty and up for doing some crazy stuff, you should definitely look at some videos of white water rafting the, some of the best rafters for the olympics and just it's it's like a huge party but there's a lot of plastic and environmental waste so we want to try to be zero waste on this film project and really clean up everything we want to have a lot of parties a lot of events uh to try to support this film project um but uh, definitely no plastics and no glass and be very uh, great to the environment because uh, we're going to try to get back into the environment and we don't want to disturb. This is what a lot of people call the last forest. Um, and when you look at the entire United States, we've basically uh, zeroed out all the land, right? There's It's either desert or it's been completely deforested. So this is all green here. Uh, you can see the green here, uh, but basically this is the last forest they call this the aurora if you're familiar aurora borealis forest uh is basically uh the last forest so this is one of the last forests on the planet i mean we basically deforested all of the united states completely right um and uh really you got this forest here on the north pole uh you got one in russia and then you got the amazon rainforest and the congo jungle and that's it so basically it's very important uh, even though we don't have the wildlife that they have in the jungle, uh, we do have a little bit, so we got to work with what we got. Um, but there's a whole different mountain range here. They don't have this mountain range in the jungle at all, so it's a totally different type of wildlife, actually, right? And you can see there's a river kind of running through here uh, where the mountains kind of split. So uh, I hope this gives you at least an introduction to what uh, this film project may be all about and uh i'll just pause this for a second so i'm going to show you this document and i absolutely do not want you to read it the reason i'm showing it to you right now is because i don't want you to take a look at this document it is actually very confidential it's spiritually confidential it's a public document 
but you should only be working on this. We have to be very careful. There's a lot of, there's 110 pages here. You should not be getting a headache reading this. We want cool ideas. We don't necessarily want what's in this document. There is a lot of details about what we're trying to do and I just didn't even begin to explain. I'm gonna add some more details to this right after this discussion, um, but it's just a huge document, right? There is just so much going on in here that we wanna try to accomplish. Uh, in the film and we really need to get the script right um, there's just so much uh, there's so much here so I, I don't even want to uh, begin to look at it all uh, but uh, basically I really want to say that this is this is a project where you know I didn't even realize I was gonna get involved with this project it's a huge like some films you know are like a hundred million dollars uh, that's basically 200 houses right so we're not trying to we're trying to do this really low budget so we want basically 200 houses in idaho to work with so if you can make a friend in idaho uh and figure out or even all the way up you know to alaska seattle and down further but basically this is an idaho project so working with people here in idaho uh you know here you are lewiston moscow pullman spokane uh coeur d'alene sandpoint if you if you know someone that has a house or you know other things we need filming locations there's so much to do so we're definitely open to whatever the part of the script is but we want it to be really important so uh if you're serious about putting something in the film uh let's go for it right um and just uh film it and we can we're not going to be doing a normal film this is going to be an unbelievable film right so uh we're gonna it's not gonna be a typical hollywood film it's not gonna be a typical uh any it's gonna be an awesome project so whatever you are if you are confident about filming whatever you're filming film it uh in idaho and we will use it so uh and basically there's going to be some really fun stuff to work with and it's maybe even some of the actors are going to change you know there's certain people that i've been like wow this person we gotta work with but you know what if it's not fun to work with them we're not going to work with them we're going to even change the actors through the film and just work with uh making the film awesome and fun because we don't want to disrupt this film is going to be so important that you know 10 years from now a hundred years from now idaho is still going to be here and this is going to be a film about idaho uh and basically discussing uh the last moments of the planet right like a lot of uh, there's a lot of evidence that Yellowstone is going to explode and what that all means. So this film is going to be a great project. And um, if you're going to be in it, we're going to change it over the years. So it's not even going to be a completed project necessarily. We'd like to get it a complete film uh, so that, you know, like a traditional project and even show it at Sundance. So <laughs> believe it or not, film is so important. If you're familiar with film and the film industry, Sundance uh, Film Festival is actually down right here. It's actually... Um, just south of Idaho in uh, uh, Utah, right? So you head out to Salt Lake City. Park City is Sundance, but actually the real deal is up here in Idaho with all the mountains, right? So it's entirely likely, and the shape of Idaho is actually like a camera. If you look at the outline here uh, on the state map, you can see the lens right here, and it may be that there's something very mysterious going on. So anyway, sorry to be like so much on this. Um, you know, I, I, I really think that there's just so many details. So I want to emphasize the importance of no headaches on this project and really having fun. So you might have a concept of what film is all about. Um, that's not going to be the case with this film. We're going to do something spectacular. Uh, we're going to be working. Uh, I mean, I'm working with people that are working on food, for instance. We're going to actually try to develop... Uh, some new food that will even change the film industry in terms of the, you go to the theater like like popcorn native indigenous people like popcorn was a vital part of the entire film industry so we're looking at food uh, projects and a number of other projects that you might not even consider film related but we want to change a lot of things so um, in Idaho because it's so close to Yellowstone this is the one of the world's most important national parks uh, and the geysers here these they shoot up 100 feet or more into the water so the, there's such energy here and and look at the size of this mountain this is yellowstone but look at what's happening here in idaho so and you can see there's some uh volcanic activity that happened here anyway so uh try to do some anyway i'm so thankful to be able to work with 
everyone. So we're uh, whether let's just try to find some really cool stuff uh, to work on here. Uh, I hope this was a good introduction to the area. And, uh, you know, we are so thankful. If you live in Idaho, uh, we are so thankful to be able to work on this project and really, like, change so much. Like, one of the cool things is we're going to make it so awesome. Like, so there's a guy with a cool house down the way. You know, we're going to try to make his house even cooler, uh, have a really fun experience, uh, and really acting like we live in a place that really matters called planet Earth. Um, and I'm so thankful to be able to work on this. See you later. Thanks again, and I really hope uh, we all have so much fun working on this together. Thank you. Uh, please try to contact me and everyone else involved.